Africa, Earth's second largest continent. The origin of civilization took place here. It is home to nearly one billion people. It is made up of thousands of groups, tribes, and peoples who over time have become 54 nations. Many of these have colonial pasts and emerged by relatively smooth change, while others endured a variety of conflicts, including wars of liberation, tribal conflicts, military coups, civil wars, and regional clashes. Today, the world can look to Africa to have the next great advancements in democracies. There is a new African in the world. That new African is ready to fight his own battle and show that after all, the black man is capable of managing the whole of us. Everybody exploited Africa, and Africans were not allowed to emerge with the dignities and freedoms that, I would say, are implanted by nature. Brothers, I think I have spoken enough in this language. It is not my wish that I should be speaking to you in a foreign and for that matter in colonialistic language. We have been subjected to insults and sarcasms, to the blows we had to endure from morning to night just because we were Africans. We learned that the law was never the same according to whether it was applied to whites or blacks. Who will ever forget the shootings or the barbarous jail cells awaiting those who refuse to submit to this regime of injustice, oppression and exploitation? Freedom is inborn. All creatures want to be free. Democracy is where a humanity devises a means to secure the freedom, to protect it, and to advance it, to govern itself, and to ensure law and order in the system. So you cultivate democracy. Democracy was destroyed by the forces of colonialism and the foreign occupation. So we are just now reinforcing what we have uh, lost to ensure that the future generation of the Africans uh, are educated in different fields of economic endeavors. We fought for democracy. Democracy, it means three, four, five parties taking the ration. Democracy is really taking off throughout Africa. We have now 30 um, functioning democracies at different levels of maturity. The way we do things are all done in a democratic way. You don't have to say it's democracy. You, you do democracy. You don't speak about democracy. You do democracy. Democracy is a process, not an event. And therefore, when the West especially uh, there is a problem in an, any area in Africa or the world. What they want to see is a rush to the ballot box and we say democracy. It's wrong. The elections are a critical and major part of the democratic process. But per se, elections by themselves do not make democracy. There are so many other things that go into a, a, a proper working democracy. There are so many other institutions that form a part of your democracy, institutions that must be properly strengthened to do that which they have to do. But you know, governance cannot be taught at school or at university. The surest way of ensuring governance is having free and fair elections and practicing the rule of law 
and respecting human rights, including women's rights. The traditions are such that power is understood in our own countries in terms of individual used to be the chief, then it became the governor. Uh, colonialism didn't help us very much in building institutions. It's only now that we are trying to build institutions, to institutionalize government. Africa started off with all the drawbacks. Hunger, disease, illiteracy, poverty. And when a state is like that, naturally, uh, it tends to become like a survival of the fittest. We have learned of the challenges having to do with the dissemination of information and the education of the public. Uh, for a society that has not had too many elections over the years, and for a population that is not um, literate, um, voting is associated with the people. Somebody is running for something and you put your support behind that person. It's personal driven. But here's a referendum on, on an issue, on an idea, not, not, not a man or a woman. We may share different political ideologies, but let's stand it together. Let's keep peace. Let's keep unity. What brought the war in the first place? The unequal distribution of wealth, the poverty, the, the, the marginalization of a particular group of people, all of those things are going to really just propel us on the journey to reconciliation, healing, and the quest for justice. Let there be justice for all. Let there be peace for all. Let there be work, bread, water, and salt for all. Let us know that for each, the body, the mind, and the soul have been freed to fulfill themselves.